up a 96. What's up, y'all? It's been a while since we've had an interior designing challenge, and this week, they brought it back. First and foremost, thank you so much for choosing Bootleg Airlines for all your travel needs, where we'll be taking you on a journey to go nowhere tonight. Bootleg Opinions. Hello there. I just want to give you a little preview of the Bootleg Studios backdrop for the upcoming weeks. Now, isn't this gorgeous? This is from Felt-Right. You can pick any color that you want, any design, any size, and you just fit it to any style that you want. What I love is that I'm a really loud talker, right? And a lot of times we film these at night and <laughs> it dampens the sound, it absorbs the sound so that my voice does not travel to the neighbors. And we're done! Ta-da! 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 Look at this! This is just the preview. So now I can go from here at the backdrop to here film stories. Well, of course, like this, right? And then I can move to the other side so it seems like I'm a new location. Ooh la 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 la. This is the Bootleg Opinion Studio, made possible by Felt Right, baby. So the challenge for this week is they have to design a bathroom. When I first heard the challenge, I was like, what the f***? And then I realized there's so many parts of this challenge that we can apply outside of Drag Race. For instance, interior designing. You're basically creating a look. You're basically creating almost like a drag con booth. And there's improv involved, there's script writing involved. And I think that the queens that improv are the ones that do best because you have two people walking around, which leads us to diving into the groups. I felt like the first two groups, they relied on the script a little bit too much. The last group, they used the script as a skeleton instead of it line for line, which is why I think makes the last group stand out. And Jane and Safira had great chemistry where they were bouncing back and forth like volleyball, or as RuPaul would say, tennis ball. <laughs> And spoiler alert, the bottom two is Morphine and Dawn. And when the song came out, it is no doubt that Dawn is about to get murdered because I just don't see Dawn performing that song that much, really. And Morphine destroyed and left no crumbs on that stage. And it is the first time during the season where I actually jumped up and got up and was like screaming at the TV because usually, maybe it's just me, I've seen so many lip syncs before. Like, I know a good lip sync is a good lip sync, but like, for me to get up and jump and get excited, that takes a lot. And Morphine did just that. But anyways, enough about me rambling to fill up the minutes for the missing guests. Now on to the runway. This week it's all about chains, 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 chains. Well, what am I looking for? Chains! Not McDonald chains, but like actual chains. Because we don't support capitalism. We first up have Dawn. Do I see chains? Yes, I see it from the top till the end. One of the judges didn't care for the chains in front of the face. I didn't mind it, I thought it was very mysterious, very psychic, as if she's trying to hide her face. Honestly, I would have done more chains in front of the face. We have the chains on the neck, we see the chains on the hips going all the way down. Though I would love for her, for the chains to stand out even more, is to have cutouts on both sides of the leg, and then do chains on the leg instead. Does that make sense? Instead of a cutout. I feel like the cutout is great, but I feel like we can show even more skin so that we can emphasize the chain even more. And props to Dawn for not giving up during that lip sync, even though she knows that that song is not for her. What I love especially is when a queen keeps on going. I love seeing a queen that does not give up on stage. She was giving us hunger. Next up is... I was gonna say, say Safira. Next up is Nymphia wins because they have like Fia at their name, Safira, Nymphia. Anyway, next up is Nymphia Wynn serving us an Asian reference with this look. We got a corset with the Asian print. I love the Asian reference with the hair with the swirls and then the pie ponytail. Though I will say that for Nymphia's level of drag, I believe that she can do a little bit more because this is a corset with tights and chains added on top of it. But she does look beautiful and very cunty. But it's still a clean and safe look. Next up is Morphine. Is she serving us chains? Hell yeah, for sure! <laughs> Now, we see the chains on the head, very Cleopatra. We see the chains on the shoulders, very warrior-esque, very gladiator. And then we see the chains on the hips going all the way down to the boots. There are a few things that threw me off. Number one is the panty. It should match the corset. It should be metallic with the corset. You can tell immediately that the corset is separate from the panty. So, I would like for her to build the panty into the corset. Number two is the length of the wig. Because if she shortens the wig, we can differentiate the shoulders as well as the bra. So this one I feel like is one of the few ones that's really delivering the theme of chains. Whereas I feel like some of them were just like outfits with chains added on them. I'm also wondering if they were told the to prompt chains. Next up is Q. I don't get it. 
I feel like I like all three pieces separately. That would be the wig, the top, and the bottom. The wig, I don't really get it. It's kind of giving me poodle. It's kind of giving me puppy or dog. And then when she lifts up her arm, it's giving me butterfly almost or ladybug with the color scheme. What I do appreciate is that she has to change throughout the entire look. Red chains popping out from the black. I felt like the pants were really well done with the correct length of the chains as compared to the top. It just looked kind of sloppy. But it is a pretty cool outfit if she edits it. Let me know what y'all think about this look. Overall for me, this look is very confusing. I just don't know what she's wearing it for, where she's going, and why she's wearing it. Other than the fact that she has to because it's Drag Race, that that was the category. And she's adding in chains. Anyways, let me know. Next up is Sephira Crystal serving you chains BDSM kink and puppy play. I love this look. I can only imagine that that is sweating under that outfit. It is latex, you can't breathe, there's no air that really goes in, and she also has a face skinny, which makes the breathing even worse. This whole look is giving me very Dalmatian with the black and white, and to enhance the white, she has trimmed the white with the chains, incorporating the theme of chains into this look. We see the chains on the purse with the, what do you call that? Fire hydrant, right? Fire hydrant, you know, cause that's where the thoughts go pee. And then on the other side of her hand, she has the chain attached to her, as if she's the owner and the dog. What I especially also love is that the fact that she sold it down the runway that she's a dog. She had dog behaviors, she had her hands like a paw. She also had a bone too, which she put in her mouth. Though, I think it would be really cute and hype up the chains category a little bit more if the bone had like chains all over it, like glue like chains all over it, and then she put it in her mouth and she bites it. I think that would serve the category of chains even more. This is wonderfully done. I love it. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but chains and whips excite me. Last up is Plain Jane. And I do have to agree with the judges that this was safe for Plain Jane. It's a little bit predictable too, because it's just a dance costume that we've seen before and then she added chains into it. But you can't deny that her mug is great, her hair is great, her outfit is well done, and I appreciate the fact that her outfit is built into the shoes as well. This is one full look. I just want to let you know that I'll be sleeping on a pillow cube after this video. They are super soft, but still very supportive, with premium breathable materials that are built to last, mama. Good evening, reporting live from the house of Hamasaki, aka my New York City shoebox. Now this is the pillow cube. It is super soft, memory foam, and I went with a silk pillowcase. And I also think that it's better for your hair too because it doesn't tangle it. Now, we spent about one third of our life sleeping. So why not make it comfortable and extra good? Because you want to wake up the next day with freshness as well, ready to slay the day. And you need all the beauty sleep that you can get. They have options for cooling during the summer, which is extra perfect. And I don't know if you know this, as a side sleeper, this is perfect, okay? Look at this. Like, it's almost like Lego against my shoulder, and I fall asleep a lot easier. I'm 120 pounds, five foot three, and I went with the four inches option, like this thick. But there's also options for five inches or six inches, so you decide what's best for you. So let's make sleeping even more fun! <sighs> and now, my favorite look is Sephira Crystal, baby! It serves as a story, it looks great, and it was a full-on production, mama. Congratulations, Sephira! You devoured the challenge as well as the runway. Now, before I let you go, because I have locked the doors, let me know in the comments below who is your favorite look for this week. Bye! Till next time! Hey, squirrel friends. When one video ends, just click on another one. It's called cringe viewing. Go ahead. I support you.